Ja, ik lijk my pum. Is dat hy die dreds moet ook nog tyd in word een beetje. Het is wel en maak my pum een beetje los, so dat ek plat is. Die dreds groeit buiten my haar. Greetings, salutations, kaitjes, tawades, kaieza. All praise and all thanks to our Creator for the wonderful day, wonderful gift of life, and liberty and mercy we receive in this life and all the lives to come. It is an honor to be with you today. Uh, it's been a pretty rough week last week and welcome to the first day of the new week. And for this very lovely conversation, no, true conversation that we will be having around bartering. Um, if this is your first time here, please let me know where you're watching and joining us from. Uh, thank you to everyone that likes and shares and comments and does all those things as well. I truly believe, no, I truly know that the wave of aware consciousness is, or awareness of consciousness is sweeping across the globe or the flat earth, whichever you prefer, that's bringing about change. And that change is starting with us, each individual, each community, each group. Sorry, I get a peek in the tree. That's what I had for lunch. Um, and I believe that, oh no, I know that these changes are positive because they stem from a place of love, an open heart, and a compassionate mind. Today, I'm not going to be taking too much of your time. Um, I'd like, I've actually prepared a script and I wrote it down and I'm going to read through to you. We've, from our previous episode, in episode one of Let's Rather Barter, it was made very clear. We need to test this principle practically. And the best practical way of testing this is by establishing seed banks locally, uh, even if it's just for your own family or even if it's just for your street. We're going to practically show all the naysayers and a lot of the people that are talking about, yeah, you need fiat currency, you can't function without money. And I want to show them the power that exists within you, the power that exists because you are here uh, on this planet and that together we can really make a difference. So let me know where you're watching from, where you're joining me from today. Um, I'll have a quick look through the comments. If you have any questions or if you want to say anything, please also share that in, this, in the comment section. And then I'll jump straight into it. Um, all the other replays are available on my YouTube. And as always, you can find me by just searching Etienne Davids anywhere on the internet. Uh, boss lady, welcome. Rejoice, Benjamin. Le confioite. Rejoice, Vasasi. Vasasi, is that okay? Vasasi, I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. Max, welcome. Rio, Shirley. Danke, Shirley. Shida. Um, Harry has joined. Mary, Marie has joined. Lionel has joined us. Miles. It's not my kids tweede naam. Uh, rejoice, you're from South Africa, wonderful, it's so lovely to have you here, and it's such a beautiful day, also, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, instead of sitting in the car, I'm sitting here by my little sanctuary, I'm, I'm trying to start a pineapple, uh, this guy needs some love and attention, that's one of those purifying the air things, I have no idea what this is, if someone can tell me what this is, it smells phenomenal, it smells like lemongrass almost, it smells amazing, but I'm using that to make potpourri, uh, save this guy, um, and that guy over there got a little blood orange over there as well. Yeah, just thought, let me stay connected to nature, not in the car today. Um, always went and collected some beautiful stones with the kids, spent some time in the sun. Um, so if, wherever you're at, I hope that despite the weather, despite the conditions, the light from within is shining bright. Um, let's see, Ridwan, welcome Ridwan. Uh, boss ladies all the way from Randburg. Yes, like Randburg. I, I, I love that area. I wonder if it's, is it still uh, as, as friendly as it's always been? Uh, I know sometimes there's a little bit of issues with the CBDs and so my um, wonderful place, uh, Randburg and Janisburg. Welcome and thank you for being here. Um, all right, so like I said, uh, if you just jumped in, thank you. And I'm very grateful for you joining part two of Let's Rather Barter. A overwhelming amount of people have said that there is definitely a resonance. We agree. I think that we are in alignment, in sync, that this is not the way life should be. We should not be um, oppressed, suppressed, or limited by something that's literally just a piece of paper. And by the value that is determined by other people sitting in far-off offices, 
disconnected from what is happening locally. And we are exploring um, what can be the best option. And right now, a practical example of being able to move into a bartering space is to setting up seed banks. So, uh, like I said, I've, I've, I've typed up a script uh, so that we keep each other's time that is valuable in a respectful manner. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to walk you through a very simple step-by-step -step guide on how you can set up a local seed bank. Uh, and, and the best part about this is that it really helps preserve and uh, not to pl only the plant diversity, but indigenous plants and empowering your local farmers in your area. I'm in Marmersbury, so we've got lots of beautiful farmers. The canolas are going to be out in bloom soon. And the purpose of these is to ensure that we have food sovereignty not food security, but food sovereignty in our communities, decentralized from other people uh, that have control issues because it's all driven by fiat currency and power. Uh, whether you're here in the Western Cape or anywhere else in the world, this guide should help you set up a community-driven seed bank. That's the only bank we need. We don't need these other rubbish banks. We need a seed bank to make a real difference. So the first step, the very first step that you need to take and this is something that also happens within your house, is to define the purpose. I know for, the, for, for our conversation today and what led us to this seed, va seed bank uh, development was the fact that our purpose is we want self-sufficient, sovereign um, access to food and products and services and to not have anyone else dictate to us what is and what isn't the value. So a good way for you to do this um, is to define why would you feel a seed bank is helpful for you in your area? What are the main goals of your seed bank? Are you looking to only conserve the plant varieties or are you promoting sustainable agriculture? Um, and also, are you empowering your, your local farmers? Once you've decided the purpose, um, you need to look at the scope. Uh, and, and this is something that will help you because you decide whether or not this seed bank serves as a specific um, service to your community. Like I said, is it for your street? Uh, is it for your block? Um, is it maybe just for your family? Is it for your whole dorp? <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, or is it for the broader region or province? And, and, and I know that I got that question in the first uh, barter episode was like, okay, now we've got this part, right? what about national? I like to take things small steps at a time. L let's do one step at a time. So in the broader region and maybe even your neighboring communities, um, we can then look at setting up those networks where we can share uh, not only what we have, the variety of seeds, but the knowledge and experience that we've gained. A practical tip um, that you can use for the first step in order for you to define an, uh, the purpose um, and the scope of, uh, of your seed bank is to start by hosting community workshops similar to what we're doing now. This is a community. This is your platform. This is you that um, can literally say and speak and express who you are, where you are with an open mind and an open heart with a community that is behind you, that supports you. And, and it's really good to, to set up these types of uh, workshops or meetings or gatherings in your area, and even if it's in your house, then just with your family, um, so that you can get input from everyone and also so that we can ensure that the seed bank aligns with the needs of your community. So I know we all think that because we think we are and we because I think I am, I know, but we need to know we're not living in an isolation. It's not a competition, we're collaborating. And if your needs um, are as priority or are a priority, but they might differ from, from, from the community that can literally help you out. So get everybody, every, as many people as you feel would resonate and that are in alignment with you on board. And that practical tip of setting up that community, get a WhatsApp group. If you wanna do the live things like um, on social, do that. If you maybe want to actually physically meet, and this is specific for people in Marmersbury, reach out to me. We do have a site here in Abbotsdale, which we will be, um, we, we are preparing, but we'll be making available for us to start with a secure place for us. We'll get to that step in this, in the in the process, but where we can meet together, where we can connect in nature. It's right by the Rafir Key. It's beautiful. It's lovely. I'll send some pictures as well, but that's the first step. Define the purpose and the scope of your seed bank. And literally the first practical step is to connect with everyone in your community and start the process. Now, the second one is to conduct 
feasibility. Now, this is this is to look at whether or not um, um, this is going to work. And, and it starts by researching your local needs. Similar to getting everybody together and finding out from them instead of assuming. Once you have everybody together, you can find out what seed varieties do we actually need? Um, and which ones are in demand? Which ones are at risk? You might think that it's this and it could be something completely different. That's Marmersbury's theme song. That's what. So anyway, um, we're going to see what are the needs, what are the seed varieties that are in demand or are risk, so that we can understand, understand, and overstand the local agricultural practice, the climate, and the soil types. Now, you don't have to go and become a whole permaculture and soil a microbiologist specialist. In an area like in Marmersbury, we've got an over flowing amount of agricultural knowledge, both based on indigenous knowledge systems, as well as, excuse me, uh, commercial farmers and small scale farmers. So when we go and have, uh, do this feasibility study, don't feel like you're under pressure and like, oh, now I don't have to go do research and stuff. You can literally, in the first step, when you've collected the community or at least alerted the community, you can say, um, boer, um, ek weet jylle het een prachtig plaas met kanou lijkies, kan jy vir ons uithelp, wat sy uh, uh, klimaat, wat sy saad, wat sy soil types, it's really good because when you engage with your local farmers and the stakeholders, um, you have an opportunity to understand what their needs and challenges are. Remember, a lot of us uh, might not have grown our own food. Um, a lot of us, a lot of us might not have any experience with even beginning a, a seed bank. Uh, and if you're like me, you've been taking the seeds from your green peppers and from the avo and from the apple that you klaar geëet and whatever, and you might just dry them and store them in your little empty glass jars. And these local farmers and stakeholders, and that includes some of the government people, I know how we feel about these institutions, but they carry a lot of knowledge and they have a, a direct understanding of the challenges that they're facing. Now, here's a practical trick tip for you. When you collaborate with local agricultural departments or NGOs and research institutions, um, this allows you to gain access to data. In South Africa, a great example to follow include initiatives supported by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, and organizations like the Biodiversi uh, Bi like Biodiversity International. Um, and remember, we don't have to like each other to work together. So a good thing to do number two is to conduct a feasibility study is this going to make sense in your community the third step uh, for you to be able to establish a seed bank a uh, seed bank a seed bank is to develop a seed bank uh, a seed collection strategy now it's one thing to say yeah we're going to preserve the and we're going to preserve but how are you going to collect those once you know what you need and what is needed it's time for you to plan your seed collection Focus on the local varieties that are important for your food sovereignty and that are resilient to your climate. Like here in Marmersbury, we get winter rain and summer sometimes it's really exceptionally hot and we um, don't really get as much rain, so it's a bit more dry. So when you identify, uh, um, when you've identified exactly what your strategy will be, you can also go to uh, the local farmers and the markets and the botanical gardens and find out from them, listen, are we able to set up a collection point here? Could we have a little boxy or thingy for somebody that in their own time, uh, that might not be able to, like I said, if you're in Marmersbury, we could, we could have a site out in Abbotsdale. You can't go there. Uh, maybe you aren't able to get there. These local markets and botanical gardens and nurseries could be a great partner for helping you set up a place for anyone to do their seed drop off. And then you, once, uh, here's a practical tip, um, you organize your seed collection drives and you collaborate with the local farmers. Let them stick out, let them be present. Let them come with the man. Let them come with the lammerkies that are born. And bring some of the crops. And this will also give us an opportunity to directly connect with those local farmers, small scale um, and commercial farmers. So you can go directly to them instead of going through a middleman or middlewoman. Um, you could even host some food fairs or cultural events to celebrate and collect traditional crops. Like what we'll be doing out in Abbotsdale for Heritage Days, we'll be celebrating the indigenous koi 
Uh, people, Abbott's Dales, uh, old, old name was actually Willy van Fontein. And there's going to be a lot of like the rappers and poets and musicians. And if you also would like to come and um, participate, uh, let me know. Send me an email if you'd like to be a vendor or if you'd like to uh, be an artist and, and showcase your your talent. But these food fairs, um, cultural fairs, uh, cultural events and um, to, uh, uh, collection points that you set up will be an incredible aid in shortening the road between how do we fill the bank with all the seeds that we ha are needing instead of you trying to figure it out by yourself. Um, the fourth step for you to establish a, um, a seed bank is to look at the seed bank infrastructure. Now, we are not devoid of intellect. We don't separate ourselves from what is modern practice knowledge that has been gained over time a lot of people say yeah you're just talking about indigenous knowledge systems or you're just talking about yeah the old need we are saying we can utilize the things that built or laid the foundation for modern times and use what has been advanced or developed out of that in a much more sustainable and sovereign manner so that it's not just driven by profit so when you are looking at your infrastructure we need to find a location for your seed bank, we need to choose a central and accessible spot with good climate control to store the seeds. Uh, proper storage is so crucial. It, it's, it's going to be, it's going to feel so much um, worse when you've done all this work, but your, your, your climate or the, um, uh, if you needed refrigeration, wasn't available and your seeds get spoiled. Uh, it's a real loss. So here's a practical tip for you. Looking for funding or donations to build or convert an existing space is one option. But again, coming to why we rather barter, we can go and speak to like what I'm uh, practically doing Monday. I've got a meeting with uh, a fantastic um carpentry and cupboard builder here in Marmersbury, actually a, a leader in um, cabinets and carpentry, McGear Cupboards, to go and speak to them about some of the off-cut and um, potential waste um, wood pieces and panels and materials that they could use in order to see if they would donate or sponsor uh, uh, those materials for us so we can build the storage facilities, build the um, collection boxes, maybe build some of the sound. But reaching out to these um, is important so that you can find out what you can do to build your infrastructure. Uh, so funding and donations, great. We can also barter in exchange for, 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 for what we need. Um, you could, could even consider a mobile seed bank um, or um, as a decentralized storage unit is also a fantastic flexible option. Um, there you then again can take full leverage, not advantage, full leverage of unemployed youth uh, unemployed matriculants, unemployed uh, graduates that are in the area that potentially are looking for uh, a avenue to garner some experience. But then at a later stage, you could look at implementing some sort of a return or a, uh, a remuneration for them. Uh, the fourth, uh, the fifth step in, and there are only 10. I think I wrote 10. Yeah, 10 steps. Uh, so we're halfway there. Don't worry, we're almost done. Then I'll go to questions and then we'll cut it and then you can spend the rest of your day with your family. Uh, the fifth step is to create a seed storage and management system. Uh, like I said, with the infrastructure, it's important to know how to maintain those seeds and make sure that they don't get spoiled. We'll need a system for managing all of the seeds. Documenting everything. What are the seed varieties? Uh, what are the collection dates? Uh, the sources of those seeds? Uh, the storage conditions, the um, the persons, if they have uh, are open to give their names, whom it was that donated, when it was that it came. Regularly updating your inventory with a viability test um, and germination rates. Now, this is where going to speak to the nurseries, the local farmers, and the, um, uh, let's say, botanists in your area, the people that are experts, especially within the Rastafarian community. I know a lot of the Rastafarian communities um, are, are fundamental in keeping the herbs and the indigenous knowledge. You can reach out to them, or if you are fortunate enough to, to know who your indigenous or traditional leadership is, you can speak to them, find out from the Sangomas, the uh, Slimman of the, 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 the Shaman, they could also give you, point you in the right direction, or alternatively, the nursery. A practical tip, 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 a tip here for creating a seed storage and management system is to start simple. 
You don't need to make this overcomplicated. A form on Google, a sheet on Google is a great place to start with one or two, three or four people. You don't have to go straight up into like, I know it's a huge task, but you can start small. And with a simple database or a spreadsheet, um, uh, you, when you start with a simple database or a spreadsheet and you train your community members in how to handle your seeds and what the documentation process is, it will all become accurate and there's also a great piece of involvement from everyone. You don't feel like you're being told, do this, do that. Everybody feels like they can play their role. The sixth step um, in our 10-step process is to develop policies for seed distribution and exchange. Remember, we're not just collecting these seeds for the sake of, yeah, we're going to opgaar and opgaar. Um, we need to set up a policy for distributing those seeds so that like what was a fantastic example uh, or, or suggestion that I got was we need to then say, for example, in my street, everybody in my street, we're just going to grow tomatoes. The following street, they're just going to grow onions. The street behind that is just going to grow potatoes so that each of those um vegetables or each of those um, um, f- harvested uh, good products can then come to a place where when we do d- the distribution where we're either going to give it to um, trade in, a, in exchange for the, the the people that can't grow or if we're able to support like for example the haven uh, night shelter which is a homeless shelter here in marmesbury which i i love to support them as well they do fantastic work they're part of a franchise of i don't want to say shelters only it's a, it's a community that helps people that are homeless or that have conditions that have left them on the street to give them a fresh start and everybody needs some fresh organic food and good food is good fuel which helps with the good recovery so if you are able to figure out exactly what the policy is who can who can't uh, and this is not to make exclusion but it's to make sure that like what the one elder told me Everybody is going to contribute because it is a communal effort. We collaborate and don't compete. And those policies on how you can distribute the seeds and who gets access and how they get access will encourage a a barter or exchange system so that farmers can contribute their seeds back to the bank after they've harvested. Uh, A practical tip for you is to organize some community events like seed swaps. Um, or workshops to promote knowledge sharing and participation. Something I'm really looking at doing and it's still on the on the uh, drawing board is to incorporate some of these uh, healers, especially the um, natural healers, people that are like telling you, if you have got, uh, want to get rid of some fevers and stuff, put onions under your feet and to come to have uh, a, a live demonstration where people can actually talk and ask questions and you can get a diagnosis as well. Those will be fantastic opportunities for you to then... Um, also, in those workshops, promote the knowledge and have participation from the others. And it will help you do two things. It will help you build trust and it will keep everybody engaged. The seventh step is to ensure your sustainability. Now, to keep the seed bank running, we know it costs, but it doesn't have to cost money. We need to think about what those things are that are needed in order to run it. Identify um, with, if you are going to look for sponsorships or donations from places that are willing to provide money um, that aren't looking to barter or aren't looking to participate, like for example, the government, there's some grants that are available, NGOs um, also have a bunch of programs available where they support initiatives like this, or you could source funding from crowds or do, you could try some crowdfunding, similar to what we did in order to find out what should we rather do when we're coming to bartering. When you're considering generating income by selling surplus um, seeds, uh, you can also start looking at offering some training or or consultation services to other areas or departments or uh, uh, private organizations from the knowledge that you've gained. A practical tip here is to ve- is to develop a business plan that outlines the seed bank's financial sus- uh, sustainability and then to reach out to your businesses, NGOs, and government programs for that financial support. I know we are talking about bartering, but that's us. Not everybody is keen on the idea of exchanging goods and services for goods and services. They still want to go the route of, I'm going to work myself frick to earn this paper money, and then I'm going to take my paper money, and I'm going to go and uh, exchange that for goods and services. But financial sustainability is important because you need to be able to keep this seed bank running and to ensure that after you or your community that's, that's, that's established this, 
once you have moved forward or moved on or moved on to the next project, it can still run on its own. Uh, the eighth and third last step in the process is to build partnerships and networks. I cannot stress this enough. This is critical. A co collaboration is, is key. Like I say, we're not in competition. We are in collaboration. Partnering with our local agricultural agencies, we've got a Carp Agri so and and and, Mamasbury, and I will still set up time with them and there's a bunch of other um, agricultural agencies, um, NGOs as well, um, and research institutions. Don't don't discredit uh, research institutions and think that they won't be able to help you. They are willing because together they are actually going to be uh, um, not just benefiting and helping us with knowledge, but they gain valuable data. And also your community organizations. Go to your churches. Go to the uh, the rugby clubs. Go to the school um, the hiking or the boys club and the girls clubs and all those those that network is, uh, is 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 so important because with other seed banks locally and and within your uh, community and with other um, agencies and groups we have the opportunity to share those knowledges the knowledges the knowledge and the resources a practical tip here is to attend the conferences and attend those uh, network sessions that they already have. There are some online global alliance, um, uh, like uh, some online uh, networks, like the Global Alliance for F uh, Future for Food. Um, and this is some ways that if you don't want to leave your house and you maybe want to just do it from the comfort of you, you are able to, but attend these places. Even if you don't speak, sit, absorb, learn, take in, See where there's some gaps in your own experience and knowledge so that you can then, in your next sitting, participate. And then at the same time, you can copy and paste and then recreate the event in your own neighborhood. The second to last or ninth step is something that I, uh, I pride myself in trying to do with my um, content that I share on our platform here is education and engagement of the community. Education is the key. I feel like if our government really cared about us, they would spend more attention and money, and this is globally, more attention, money, and energy on education, not um, for the purposes of turning you into another debt slave, but for empowering you. Because providing training on sus uh, sustainable farming practices, um, seed saving, and biodiversity con uh, conversion, um, conservation, let me start that again. Education is crucial because providing training on sustainable farming practices, seed saving, and biodiversity conservation will really make the big difference in the future that we will walk into. We could conduct awareness campaigns. You don't even need to be like, y'all come sign up. You just have to make people aware. Some people might not even know that you are um, a seed bank uh, or a collector or you are uh, formulating. A, put a sticker on the back of your car if you drive. Put a sign outside of your house if you feel comfortable with it. Um, because that awareness in itself will then have somebody that has the thought or that's been thinking about it or been talking about it or they'll know, oh, there's my tribe, there's my people. Let me go and help. Let me go contribute. Let me go and give a hand. A, uh, conducting these awareness campaigns will promote the importance of the seed bank and the seed diversity and food sovereignty. I know you're expecting me to say uh, food sustainability, but we want food sovereignty. A practical tip here is you can do what we're doing now. Use social media. Um, you can use your social networks, like I mentioned, and community events. There's sometimes these uh, meetings in the halls. Go to your local library. I don't know, a lot of people don't go there. Go to your local library. Ask them if you can put up a notice there. People still read books. Even if not everybody does it, people still read books. But that will be a place for you to collaborate. Um, it will be a place for you to spread the word. And it's also a great place for you to then share when your events happen. Collaborating with schools. That is just the best. Start with the nursery schools, the preschools, the primary schools. Let the kids learn young. It's also a fantastic way of getting their attention away from the TV. Um, and collaborating with these schools and local organizations will engage the youth in a way that they are so starved for. And then you can be a practical a contributor to making that a reality. The tenth and final step is to monitor and evaluate the process. Um, good Science is good observation. So regardless uh, of where you are in the process or regularly assessing the seed bank's performance, uh, regularly assessing the levels, what you've learned, 
regular assessing and re-evaluating the policies that you've written once you've practically applied them. These are the things that will help you make sure you are hitting the mark. Remember, the first step was to assign a purpose and a scope. This is what the final step of evaluation and monitoring is for. Are you preserving enough seed varieties? This is a good question that comes out of evaluating it. Sorry, Ella. Um, is our community engaged? And this is not just by how many likes and follows and comments you, you are getting. It's based on, remember, that register, the database, how many people are contributing. We need to be able to evaluate what is missing. Is it the messaging is missing? Is it the times that we are online? Is it the, 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 the design of the... You can only improve. Don't be afraid of failing. Fail forward. Plant a flag, learn a lesson and move forward. Um, are you actually financially healthy and this is not only determined by the rands and cents in your account is those is those are those who are openly donating or bartering with you or sponsoring you are, are is there is there still a con concerted effort is it a continuous uh, um, contribution that's happening there and it's not just a one-way road are you still giving back so that you can know that, that nobody feels used at the end of the day collecting feedback and that's what we do uh, here, is, and that's what's after this. I'm going to uh, open it up for questions. Uh, and also, if anybody would like to jump on and, and uh, participate, we need to collect feedback so that we can adapt our strategy as it's needed. That's something that I know you know is missing from your mo municipality. I know you know that's missing from your provincial government. I know you know it's missing from national government. They don't reevaluate. We have to wait four years for somebody that's now failed in the thing to vote for them for someone else. This is not the way this will function. If I screw up now and we've evaluated it and we figured, okay, Etienne, you made a mistake here. This needs to be fixed. That needs to be, let's give me an opportunity. Let's make sure that I've uh, got all the information necessary to make sure I'm aligned with the needs and then to try again. If I'm still not capable of make, meeting our requirements, making sure that we are financially healthy, making sure that the strategy is working, then it's not time for, oh, shame, but here, you must go, manier. And then I have my good pack and space make for die what this can and can do. It's not an ego trip. It's not a personal attack. It's what's best for our community. It's what's best for the future. A practical tip here is to develop clear metrics. Sorry, let the camera go for a Clear metrics for success. The same way that I do with my consultation with my social media and digital marketing and digital strategy consult uh, clients. You need to know. You can't just say, yeah, I, wanna, I want to uh, have brand awareness. I want to uh, develop a digital brand. What are the metrics that you are going to use? What is the measuring stick to determine success or failure? You need to develop clear metrics for success, such as uh, the uh, number of seed varieties, how many seed varieties based on our local community that we're in. Uh, what is our community participation rate? How many people do we... Um, Think do if we come to these events or to our workshops, how do we know it's working? Okay, at least so many. Um, and also, when it comes to your financial stability, what are your um, ROIs, uh, returns on your investment, uh, or in, in investment in this time, in this instance, doesn't necessarily just have to be money, but in terms of those that are providing the sponsor and the barter uh, in exchange, conducting reviews is more than just an administrative task it will be the thing that keeps us on track so just so you can have an idea that this is not something that just came oh and oh we do in south africa there are some great examples of successful seed banks uh, especially in africa in africa there are uh, several uh, seed banks and just from a quick search you can look um, in south africa community seed banks in limpopo and in the eastern uh, Cape are excellent models. Uh, you can just do a quick search there. It's integration of local knowledge um, with formal agricultural research. The same way that we do here in the Western Cape, out in Mamri on the West Coast, um, at Casa 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 Caras, uh, the renewal crown that I'm involved with, a cooperative there, where we are using indigenous knowledge systems together with formal agricultural uh, practices in order to build a sovereign food security system. In Kenya, the Seed Savers Network um, conserves indigenous seeds 
uh, and provides training to the farmers. Some of the farmers are so driven by commercial uh, or just by the the, um, um, the fact that they're trying to make this ends meet that they are lacking some of the training that you have. And providing that training to them is phenomenal. In, in, in Ethiopia, a community-based, uh, a community seed bank um, or community seed banks are crucial for the preservation of local crops. And it has greatly improved food sovereignty. So in conclusion, before I open it up for questions, um, here, this was a 10-step guide uh, on how to start your own local seed bank. Uh, and by following these steps, you'll be on your way to creating a at least a sustainable, but more importantly, a sovereign, community-driven uh, seed bank that will preserve local biodiversity and um, also support your food sovereignty and your connection to your community. So we don't just drive past each other. We don't just walk past each other. We actually know who our neighbors are like back in the day. And you can not a copy tea or a copy of a copy. If you want uh, more detail on this um, step-by-step guide, I think I will make it available on my website um, for you to go and uh, view down obviously for free. Um, you can also check out organi- um, uh, resources from uh, organizations. Sorry, he's just made dang no furi dang uh, You can uh, re- um, resources from organizations like the Alliance of Biodiversity Diversity International, um, the CIAT, and there's a bunch of other uh, seed conservation networks that are globally run. And I really hope that this helped inspire you a little to take action. You know, we scroll so much, but. I know you're here because you're ready to do something about it. Uh, so I'm going to open up to questions quickly. Oh, uh, and questions if you have any questions. And also uh, for a little while, I'm going to open up to anybody that would like to come on to the panel and discuss. Let me go and see what is the comments that you've got or that you might have placed. Um, and then we will call it a day. Boss lady, still lovely. Oh, that's about Randberg. I'm so glad. I love and so friendly. Great, uh, great town. And also wherever you're from, it would be great to know where uh, you're joining us from today. User 59699, clump numbers. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, it's, it's because we are together and because we're not going to allow the thing that we're sick of to continue on. We cannot comply ourselves out of this mess that has been made. And we can't not take responsibility with the current way things are. Um, Miss Nzwana, I love your idea, my brother. I love your comment. Thank you so much. And it is, I wish I could take ownership of it myself, but it came out of our very first episode of Let's Rather Barter, where, again, the power is in you. Sometimes we just need to have the conversation, no, the true conversation together to reignite that spark that's already existent in you. Um, and then, before you know it, knows. I don't know what you're talking about. You mean the the Arki Cecil? I don't know who Zufi is, but I can't wait. Most times, most my all day die. Ian Pinard bought a brewery. What up in Groenfall? Let's see. Elijah. Yeah, I don't know Elijah. We 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 won't get tripped up by foolishness. Z four I eight. Why day? Why day? Why day? Hi, Chess. Lovely to have you here. Thank you, Zufi. Ek sit ook bater op my brood. <laughs> bater. Love it. Supreme Elder. All of these plans has to involve education at primary schools. 100% Supreme Elder. Turn them into Lundbo and tech schools. Yeah, I think uh, I could start with a simple initiative during the school holidays. Um, it can also be as easy as an after school plan where you can literally say okay mommies daddies ek weet jylle is heel dag by die werk uh, die kinderkies het niks beter om te doen other, other than watching TV of, or, or gaan speel in die pad but we will make use of the facilities that belong to us because you can go to your municipality and say ek gaan die saal gebruik and they shouldn't be charging you ek gaan die saal gebruik and you go to the schools and you say here is a after school program where we will be teaching these kids what the soil is let's teach them what about the plants that exist within the area that they're in um, which are the ones that are indigenous which ones are the ones that are invasive so that the kids can have that education already uh, let's see no cons please uh, Roy, yes we're not having conversations we're having true conversations only uh, where else uh, is there any other questions 
Kufur Mate. Kufur Mate. Hi, Kufur Mate. Wonderful to have you here. It's so great to, to have you join us. Thank you. I, I wonder where you're joining us from. Supreme Elder, the Gift of Truth, also has a bartering channel on Telegram. Oh, fantastic. I must actually check up. I've just recently joined the Telegram group. So I will also have a look at that um, because that would be fantastic. That's also another one of the steps where you can utilize social media and some of the platforms to set up your bartering community. So thank you for that, Supreme Elder. Um, I appreciate love the fact that you mentioned that. Uh, Truth Melon, good day. I just joined. I like what I hear thus far. Occupy those little minds properly. Yes, occupy their minds, their hearts, and their hands with things that equip them and empower them so that they may not become occupied with things that remove them from nature and from being connected to their community and truthful in their journey and discovery of themselves. So we're not handing spears and shields to every generation after us, singing struggle songs, talking about freedom, but having them go out with blank canvases and blank books coming back and telling us their stories and their experiences in our sunset years, knowing that they've got good, healthy nutrition from good um, seeds that produce great fruit and vegetables and that have set balance back to the society in which we find ourselves. Uh, so I'm gonna, open, I'm gonna have a little bit more time open for some questions. If anybody has um, some questions or if you'd like to jump on, unlike some of those comments that were coming in from the distractors, we, we, we will entertain you for a short while, but you're not gonna trip us up. You're not gonna stop the progress of sovereigns. You're not gonna stop people because you think, yeah, 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 let's talk shit about him. Everybody has a past. Everybody's done things that they might not have uh, been proud of. But we are the authors of our lives and we can rewrite that script today. And it starts with educating yourself on what it means to free yourself. Free your mind, free yourself. Once you've emancipated yourself, it is so much easier to walk in your power to then see what can I do instead of asking, what is going to be done to bring a change that we all want to see? Um, so thank you for everybody that was here today. If you joined in a little bit late, Askis Yamar, that you missed it, but I will play the replay. Uh, just a quick recap. I went through the 10 steps uh, on how to start your own uh, seed bank. And I will be sharing that practical list with you. And um, I will also be documenting my experience with the places that I'm going to... I'm not just talking here, guys. Girls, boys, men young girls, women, we need to do better. We can't say we aren't seeing practical examples of our leadership. We've seen fat cats sit there and just dictate and preach. Be the change you want to see. And I'm going to lead by example. So I shared the 10 steps. I will document my process. If you're in Marmersbury, we are setting up an area in Abbotsdale where you can come and participate in the workshops and the training based on indigenous knowledge systems. Um, there's also, we've already started a food garden and we've already started a whole bunch of other stuff. So you will come and see. Um, if you need any help in any way, please send me an email. Um, I would love to connect you with anyone else. If you're open to look at bartering with anyone, the best tip I can give you is whenever it's, you say, I am willing to barter, be clear that I will accept this, 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 and this in exchange for what I offer, this, 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 and this. And to operate in honor, in truth, and with integrity. Remember, this is not about gaining. We're not in competition. We're in collaboration. And when you act in honor and in truth and with integrity and with respect, that's exactly what you're going to get in return. A big thank you again to Ella Bella Beauty Salon right here in Marmersbury, uh, Crazy Customs right here in, in Marmersbury who directly support me and make it possible for me to create content and to have live conversations like this and pursue a change uh, within a system that needs to be desystemized. Um, thank you to you for watching, for every single one of your likes and comments and shares and beautiful emails and messages. Uh, feel free to still continue to share any questions you have with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Make sure you take care of yourself. Be kind. Love yourself. You're powerful beyond measure. You are capable, not incapable. And we live in Africa. We, are, we live in Africa because we're African, not Afrikaans.
Thank you so much for joining us. Have a beautiful day with your family. Love to you, your family, and everyone that loves you back. I'll see you in the next one. Hi, Sare. What a doist that was talking cuck about.